Hello, my name is Chris Kiak with Kiak Technology Solutions. I've been a Tecla API developer for well over 15 years. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a tool I created for myself to actually help me be more productive and accurate in creating my code. And I'm always looking for opportunities to save time in developing my code so that way I can get tools out faster for clients, but then also just to make sure that I'm more accurate as I'm doing my coding. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so I'm here in the Tecla model and I've got a variety of different custom components, uh, old system components developed with the dev kit before the .NET API, as well as some .NET plugins here. So a variety of details, custom parts, seams, connections, and uh, components or plugins. Now, what I do is I develop building system configurators for a lot of my clients, which basically means I'm nesting either custom components or plugins or system components, and I'm nesting them together into a system. Like if you think about, for instance, the stair and then having the posts and the railings and maybe the wall rails, you want to apply all of these together as a master component or a configurator that puts all those in based on some input geometry from a master control program or a, you know custom plugin dialog box that calls out those children uh, system components. So let me show you uh, basically uh, something that helps accelerate that process. Well, here, if I go inside of this custom component, there's all of these inputs that I need to uh, basically be able to send information from my master configurator and that dialog box and send information and pass it to these parameters on these custom components or on these system components. And so basically what you have to do is you have to find what these variable names are. And this can be a very tedious, time-consuming process. And if you don't copy and paste the values or you mistype the values, it can actually be error prone and you don't catch it right away. So what I do is I'm always looking for opportunities to save time for myself. So I just created a quick tool here where I can go ahead and select on a component in the model. And then I just say create code and it automatically generates a function for me. So it reads all of the properties and the inputs for this uh, particular custom component or Tecla plugin, and it automatically generates a method of code for me. So it's uh, when it generates this, you can review it, but I copied it to the clipboard automatically. And so now if I actually go in Visual Studio, I can just paste that method in here. Now what it's doing is because I've told it to uh, convert uh, some of the, uh, the double values to imperial, just uh, so that way I can see the values in inches, for example. Uh, rather than uh, seeing them in native millimeters. That's what this extra imp method is here. I've already got that in my code, so I'm just gonna delete that out. But let me show you what I'm talking about with that. So here, distance three, four, five, six, and seven on that custom component. Um, basically, the, they are double values. And so here you can see that there's this imp method that takes this decimal inch value and converts that to millimeters for this plugin. And I just do it this way because then it's easier for me to see stuff that's in the user interface, which is in Imperial uh, feet and inches. And then it translates easier for my brain when I'm looking at this here in code, because I'm thinking more in inches versus millimeters. Um, so, and again, if you don't want that, you can just kind of, I, I just uncheck that if I'm working in a metric environment and then it gives me the raw millimeters. So, and this imp method is actually very uh, familiar because the custom component editor actually has this method. And then so does the Tecla template editor I think, at least I know the custom component uh, editor does, but I'm not sure what the template editor does. But basically it uh, uses this, so it's very familiar. Now, here I've got my code, and you can see that, again, like within seconds, all of this is automatic. Now there might be some things that I don't need in here, like uh, some of these variables that are kind of not really needed for me to be set. So I can always just delete things out that I don't need, like some of these positioning variables and stuff like that. So I'll just get rid of these. And then I'm basically just keeping the things that I need to have that I know that I want my master program to be able to basically kind of uh, customize or change. And so here I'm able to see all of these values that are coming from that dialog box. And then um, I can keep whatever I need to here and then just uh, change the hard coded values that are from that component and pass my variable names to that as required. But here, this just saves a lot of time and accuracy in creating that. Now, let me actually test this out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say create roof seam component and then I'm gonna pass some inputs to it. So uh, primary, and then I'll do secondary, and then I have a start point, end point, and then I have my component settings, which are just gonna be like some saved attributes, and I'll just use the default attributes there as a starting point. Okay, so where did primary, secondary, start point, and end point came from? Well, I've basically just got some uh, sample picker code here, so that way I can kind of test this, and here I'm gonna pick two parts. Um, there's my primary and secondary, 
And then I'm gonna actually pick two points using this picker method to pick two points, which will allow me to string this together as a line. And then I'll pass those to this uh, component co code or method that I just created. All right, so let me just go ahead and run this. And then uh, when that comes up, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this out. So you see it here before I delete that. And now if I just say test, I'm going to pick my two parts and then I'll pick here and go perpendicular. And look at that, same exact component using the code that automatically was generated by this tool. Now, the way that I'm fetching basically all of these uh, variables automatically from the selected component in the model is I'm using the get all user properties method on the component object. And it's fetching anything that has any of the attributes for the component to uh, set. Now, this can sometimes be overwhelming uh, if you have a very large component that, you're, that has a lot of input fields and you're trying to get everything. Now, that method uh, to get all user properties, it will only fetch things that have non-default values set. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I actually come back into the model and I go into this component here, um, here you can see that something's actually been filled in on all of these fields in the component, except for, for instance, here, the material grade, because I see that on the custom component, there's square brackets around that, which means that the default value is being shown and that this field is empty on the input in the dialog box. Now, if you're just trying to target very specific parameters, so you know you're just trying to find like uh, this parameter here, this one, and this one, and you want to ignore everything else. Well, on uh, some of the like custom components or system components, like connections and details, I tend to uh, suggest where I'm going to load up defaults and it empties everything out. Well, now, how do I differentiate uh, this value from this value? Well, I'm going to do three foot here, and then I'm going to put uh, four foot on this one. And then maybe I'll just do uh, one foot here. And so it's just these three target values that I'm specifically looking for. So I'll just go ahead and say modify. Now you're gonna see that it changes uh, some other uh, parameters and things. Maybe I didn't want that. But again, all I care about here is I'm just trying to get the variable names that I need specifically based on these three values that I filled in. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my code generator. So I'll just open up the tool. I'll select on the component and I'll say create code again. Now, there are still some of those like pesky kind of analysis attributes and some other attributes that no matter what I do with the defaults, it's, it's not there. But uh, what I can do is I can actually just fetch these three parameters here that look like they're the input values. See the imp12, imp48, and imp36. And I could copy those values and I could ignore any of the other valuables or variables if I don't need those. So then I can close those down, I'll go back into my code, and then I'll just replace this here with those lines of code. And now I know the difference between what D5, D6, and D7 is. Sometimes, you know, in custom components, you get P1, P2, or D, D1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or even in the system components, there's these variable names where you're like, uh, this is very cryptic, it doesn't make sense. And so what I do to cheat, so that way I can kind of understand which variables are which, especially when some of the names are very cryptic, um, what I do is I just make sure that I put clearly different numbers or different values on the dialog box. And I just put those in there so that way I can visually see those inputs and go, oh, I know which variable that is, that variable is, and that variable is there. And it just then helps me kind of accelerate figuring out what a specific variable goes with which. So this gives you an idea of the power of, you know, automatically generating code and figuring out how to easily map variables from custom uh, components or system components that you're trying to call in your API code.